So I was recently introduced to a editing software called Perfectit, and it's a proofreading software for professionals. Uh, it focuses specifically on editors and authors, but it also gets into other areas as well. And, you know, I, I wanted to spend a little time today talking about editing and the tools we can use. Um, I'm especially liking this Perfectit, even though I just started using it this morning. And let me kind of go first through what editing is, because typically there's varying levels of edits. And unfortunately, in the publishing industry, the definition of edits varies depending on which publication house you're talking to or which editor you're talking to. Typically, the lightest level is just a proofreading. That's when somebody has completely edited the manuscript and we're just focusing now on uh, a polishing edit. And so making sure that any last minute typos are caught and things like that. Then typically the, the lightest is a line edit. And there you're looking at spelling, grammar, capitalization, punctuation. There's a number of, of fairly easy, simple, quick things to fix. If it requires more editing than that, typically that's what we would refer to as a content edit. And a content edit includes everything in a line edit, but it also starts looking for redundancies and consistencies, uh, wordiness, um, vague generalizations, weak sense style, clarity, and tone. And then you can get into something called a development edit. And where a content edit is looking to make sure that the content flows and makes sense from one part of the book to the other, the development edit is going to make sure that the book as a whole, the structure of it flows from one part to another so that the reader isn't lost along the way. And so it can look at organizational weaknesses and structure. It can look at the flow of the information. It can look at uh, whether or not there's, there's enough focus. And as a publisher and an editor, what we often do is we are doing multiple rounds of editing when we look at a manuscript. So we will go through, we have our own um, publisher guidelines that we have in terms of our own styles that we like to use for certain things. Like for instance, AM and PM. Is it capital A, capital M? Is it A dot M dot? Is there a space before it or no? These are all things that are allowable, both by the Chicago Manual Style and the dictionary. And so the publisher has to come up with what is their guideline for how they do it, uh, so that from one book to the next in the catalog, they're applying the same standards. And so there are all these different things that need to be looked at when we're going and working on a new manuscript. So we'll look at those things. We'll look at everything that would typically be in a line edit. We start getting into then the content edit if that's needed. And we will edit in multiple different ways. So sometimes what I do is, is I take my iPhone, you know, and I have it set up in such a way that um, you can go into settings and you can set, um, set it so that the phone will read what's written on the screen for you. Uh, so if you go into the speech settings, you can do text to speech. And um, that way, what I can do is I can email the manuscript to my Kindle app, and then I can use my phone to read it to me. And because the, the phone doesn't have any investment in how the intonation of something is or what's spoken, it's going to read exactly what's there. And so as a result, a lot of times just by ear, I can pick up on uh, inconsistencies or issues or missing words or commas even that are there that don't belong there or not there that should be there. Uh, so do a lot by ear, but then we do multiple passes through the Word document itself. And so by the time we're done uh, with our editing process, at least typically we've gone through the manuscript at least seven times and more commonly about 10 times uh, before the manuscripts ever released. So a lot of times somebody will come to us and maybe say, my manuscript's already edited. Um, that's good. Uh, as an author myself, as a publisher, as an editor, I still get my book edited by somebody else. Um, having multiple people look at it helps a lot. Uh, we often have another editor that we have uh, go through things so that it's not just me ed editing everything. Uh, we have two different sets of eyes on it. So anyway, using software though, helps with picking up on a lot of the things that um, makes an editor's job easier or an author's job easier. It can be used by both. And I found uh, you can use, like in Word, you can use spell check, you can use the grammar check, but it's not going to pick up everything. And you can't trust 100% that it's right. You have to use your judgment. Human assessment is going to determine which things really should be changed and which should not. 
A lot of people also use Grammarly, and I, I certainly have used that often enough just to do some quick checks to make sure that I'm doing a, a good job with a final polishing edit. Uh, but oftentimes Grammarly will pick up on things that it says should be changed that in fact should not be. So once again, human assessment is needed. Uh, one of the things that I really liked about Perfectit is it is a, another plugin that plugs into Word, just like Grammarly can be as well. But it's looking at things across the span of the whole document. So one of the things it's doing, for instance, is looking to see, have you been consistent on how you do things in one part of the document versus another? So I'm going to actually uh, just kind of walk through the site a little bit. Um, what it does is it looks at things like if you use abbreviations, have you defined what it is? Are you consistent with your capitalization, both in headings, but also in list items in a bulleted list? Um, if there's a house style you apply, like the example I gave of AM and PM, uh, you can define the house style in Perfectit so that that's part of what it looks for. It'll look at things like hyphens and dashes and make sure that you're using the appro appropriate uh, one for the various cir circumstances. Uh, it thoroughly examines bullet lists, uh, bullets and lists to make sure that each list item is set up properly in terms of punctuation, capitalization, and all of that. Uh, looks for spelling, typos, and numbers, uh, just a bunch of different things. It also, if you happen to be writing from a legal standpoint, uh, it has um, different legal guidelines that it looks like looks at as well. So a lot of interesting things. The pricing for it, they do have a free trial for 14 days, which is currently what I'm on, uh, but we definitely will be purchasing a one-year license to it. Uh, it's $70 a year, and, and depending Depending on the volume of what you do for editing, it may very well be worth it for you as well. At the very least, if you have a project you're currently working on, I highly recommend uh, giving the trial a try and uh, seeing how it works out for you. But let me show you what it looks like in action. So I have a manuscript I've already started using this on. And I've gone through, this is the progress bar down here. And you can see I still have a long way to go until I've fixed everything. Uh, but what I did is I, uh, you come in and you select perfect it and you launch perfect it. And when you launch perfect it, it does a check of everything that's going on, uh, that, that throughout your entire document. And then it shows you one by one what the issue is, what was checked, um, what, you know, kind of a description of what that means. And then it shows you, for instance, I've got two different instances of mouthwatering. One is hyphenated, one is not. Now, that does not automatically mean that one of them is wrong. It just means that there's an inconsistency here, and so it's worthwhile to check. So if I look at the first one, I'll see uh, it is expecting without a hyphen, but here's a version with a hyphen. So I can click on that. It takes me to the point in the document. And here, mouthwatering is being used as an adjective for appetizer. So it should be hyphenated. But if I look at the other one, mouthwatering, it's, it's wondering if it should be hyphenated or not. Here's the example. Is my mouth watering? Well, in that instance, no, it shouldn't be hyphenated. It's perfectly fine as it is. So I don't have to do anything. I can click next and it will take me to the next issue of uh, that it's looking for inconsistencies for. So right now I'm just going through a section on hyphenation of phrases, but there are all sorts of checks that are done. So you can select to have it look at, you know, hyphenation consistency, which is what I'm currently going through. Uh, n dash consistency, you know, when is an n dash used versus a hyphen or a space? Um, it'll look at similar words to find out, you know, have you mixed up a homophone or not? Um, there's just all sorts of things that you can do. You can set what your spelling variations are. So are you in the UK or the US or Australia and, and, you know, what should be used? And all of these different things are things that it's going to be looking at. Compound words, contractions, phrases to avoid common typos. And so it's going to, each time I press next, it's going to go to the next of these checks that it's done that it's found. So here I have no one that is is uh, found eight times with no hyphen, but this one instance, it has a hyphen. And so I've jumped here and no one else was there. Well, in fact, that really should be fixed. That should have no space. So I click the fix button and it's fine. But let's look at the other ones to make sure that that all makes sense. So no one key fits all the locks. Um, I told a coworker that I was seriously thinking about taking a vow of silence since no one was listening to me anyway. That's fine. There's no one to help me. I'm alone. So, you know, you go through each of these instances. Now, one of the things I found is that sometimes it's worth looking up the word in 
the dictionary just to make sure that there isn't a difference in how it is handled in one instance versus another. Uh, so for instance, I was looking earlier at um, moment by moment uh, and hand to, uh, hands on and, and different things like that. Sometimes uh, if I looked at, for instance, in the dictionary, if I looked at hands on, when I look it up as an adjective, it's hyphenated, but yes, as an adjective, it's hyphenated. So that's not the one I was thinking about. Um, although it's funny because in this instance, when hands on was one of the things that was identified by perfected, uh, hands on was used correctly as an adjective. And then there were a whole bunch of instances where it was not hyphenated and it was flagging those. And in each one, it actually was part of an exercise where the author was telling someone to place their hands on their thighs, in which case, you know, that's not something that would be um, hyphenated, but it looks for these inconsistencies so that you can verify one by one. Now, oftentimes when I'm doing my passes through a manuscript, you know, the first couple of passes, I may take something, you know, a paragraph like this, I'm going to sit down and I'm going to go through it multiple times. I'm going to go through and first look at, you know, back home, the phrase, it's complicated, filled much of my mind space. So I'm going to look at, you know, are the quotations in the right place? Are they the right kind of quotation marks? Um, mind space, you know, should this be hyphenated? Should it not be hyphenated? Uh, I realized that I needed to call on my witness to do some reflection. So I would go through this line by line to check first for the punctuation, uh, then for the grammar, then for, is this too wordy? Can it be shortened? Um, for instance, you know, uh, I wanted to, to answer. So, so that, do I need this, that I wanted to answer so I could put up, you know, so, so I look for ways that it can be shortened or clarified. And so I can easily end up spending a good, you know, three, four, five, sometimes even longer minutes on a single paragraph, just to make sure that it is as clear as possible, as concise as possible, and that the grammar rules are being followed and all of these different aspects of it. So in the end, using something like this that is going to allow me to do some of that cleanup ahead of time so that when I go through and I read line by line, I spend less time on doing that is going to save me a lot of time. So I'm really excited to have found Perfect It. I'm looking forward to being able to use it more in my day-to-day -day -day business. Um, I do highly recommend you taking a look at it as well if it's something that you think might uh, work well for you. The website is called intelligentediting.com and um, I'm, I'm really looking forward to playing more with this. Hopefully this uh, behind the scenes uh, video has given you some ideas as to what all goes into editing, some of the things that are looked at. I think the thing that really stood out to me the most when it came to using this is just, you know, if you have a manuscript that's 346 pages long, remembering how you used a word on page 10 versus how the word is used on page 300 um, can be taxing at the very least. And so having something that goes through and looks for these consistencies is really, really going to make my life a lot easier as an editor. And I hope that uh, this is something that you're interested in checking out too. Anyway, all the best. Thanks for watching.